Okay, so into the semi-finals we go. Uh, we have Chaiwi once again, we saw him uh, just on the quarterfinals, just the previous game up here. And he is on 4C Orion, and he's up against Winston playing Mono Blue Merfolk. So this is probably going to be a kind of control versus an aggro strategy. Uh, Mono Blue Merfolk with some interaction, 4 Force of Negations in the main board. Uh, things like Curse Catchers as well, 1 Subtlety as well. Pretty varied list, I must say. Uh, more counter spells in the sideboard. Um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. <clears throat> so, starting us off right now, players are looking at their hands. And seeing if they have enough lands. Looks like Chaiwi has a lot of bombs, but not enough lands. Uh, Winston here, still looking through his hand. Merfolks, the, the lists usually are pretty tight. Um, the curve is very low as well. And he has decided to keep his deck in particular, 9 islands. And in total, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 other lands. So he has 18 lands in total. Um, but he also has 3 glass pool mimics. So bringing it up to 21 lands with the DFCs. Interesting to see how this would do. We did see a different Merfolk list earlier on in the tournament. Uh, it was up against Elves and it also did pretty well. So it was Merfolk against Elves uh, with a lot of you know Lords as usual. But slightly different um, different list. Yeah, definitely a different list. <clears throat> and of course we saw Chaiwi's list in the quarterfinals previously. He is all about elementals and big planeswalkers, well, planeswalkers and a lot of removal. 4C Orion, of course, one of the top meta decks. Uh, players, especially players that are not playing meta decks, maybe Merfolk is not so meta right now. But it could be a, a reaction against all these slower... Uh, more mana greedy decks. So Chaihui is just thinking whether he should keep, I think. Yep, he is going to keep the 6 and put one card at the bottom. Winston is going to start us off with an island and a curse catcher. Curse catcher, only a 2 off in his list. But pretty powerful um, against Chaihui's deck. Uh, perhaps, perhaps not. Counters, you know, counters random things, I guess. <laughs> Could slow down uh, Chaihui at least by one turn. And of course, it's a 1 mana, 1 1 Merfolk. So that's always efficient. So Winston here playing his uh, Otawara. Only one copy in the deck. Does he have a Lord here? Nope, it's a Silver Guild Adept. And he's going to pay 2 mana for that and reveal uh, Pearl Trident. Uh, the Merfolk uh, Pearl Trident, yeah, the Lord. The Merfolk Lord. Yes, Master of the Pearl Trident. Not Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Try reason. Place a land, place Abundant Growth. Draws from Abundant Growth. And when he finds a land.
and passes right back to Winston. <clears throat> uh, oh, sorry, yeah, it is Traverse the Oven World. So finds a basic land card into his hand. And Winston here playing the Master of the Pole Trident, pumping up his creatures. Looks like he wants to play the Glasspool Mimic as his third land drop. So the DFC coming in handy here, but it's a tap land. Now does Chai Hui have... Well he has, he looks like he has a lot of answers in his hand. Uh, there's a Solitude. He's gonna lay a land first. So Merfolk definitely pushing the advantage uh, 6 damage from last turn. Chaiwi just opting to put Gorion into his hand and immediately evoking out Solitude, targeting the Master of the Pole Trident. So definitely trying to play around any counter spells, doing it while Winston is tapped out, makes sense. So Winston here tapping 2 mana could be another Lord. It is Master of the Pole Trident. Taking Chaihui down to 9. And this is probably the point where Chaihui needs to find a way to deal with the threats as well as put out some kind of board presence. He kind of needs a blocker. Island walk shouldn't really bother him right now because I don't think he has an island. It's a temple garden, a misty rainforest, and a snow covered forest. So he's not too concerned that they have island walk, but he kind of needs to deal with the Lord and maybe you know block some of the damage that's coming his way. Okay, so he has chosen to sacrifice his Misty Rainforest. This is um, interesting. He probably needs the red mana. Or not, I am wrong. <laughs> he needs blue. Wait. Uh, let's see what he does. So he tutors out an island, and then plays a plains. Aha, and then he plays traverse. So second traverse, and this time he plays it with the delirium, because he has four more card types in his graveyard. He has a sorcery, a creature, an enchantment, and a land. Oof. And in response, Winston is going to Force of Negation, exiling Surveyor Loon. So Traverse is exiled as well. And I think Chaiwi really wanted to find an Omnath there. But he just has to settle for Risen Reef, which honestly is not too bad. So unfortunately now, yep, there's Island Walk and he's dead. So. Lord of Atlantis coming down, pumping all the Merfolk by one more power and toughness, and Merfolk takes game number one of this semi-finals. What a game, what a game. That force of negation, I don't know if it would have mattered. Uh, I guess it would have, because Traverse could have found anything from Solitude to Omnath to Fury, uh, and wiped out Winston's board. So yeah, tough game I think for Chaiwi, there's going to be a lot of counter magic to go through. Um, in the sideboard for Merfolk, there is still things like 
uh, fluster storm, there are two counter spells, there are two mystical disputes. So I'm I I'm, I guess counter spell might come in. And there's also Harbinger of the Tides and Kira, great glass spinner, but not as likely to come in. So the previous game in the quarterfinals, we saw Chari just steamroll through Black Green York Moth, but he's having a harder time here against Merfolk. Definitely a more aggressive deck, uh, piling on the pressure early on. If Merfolk can just get a few Lords out, and even just one, one or two Lords with, you know, one or two Merfolk, that's, that's, that's going to represent a significant chunk of damage. And Chari, as we saw, finds it hard to get some blockers out. Uh, his main creatures are value pieces that he kind of wants to keep around on the field. Or the elementals that are being evoked out and, you know, can't block. So we'll see how this goes. This time he's going to start. Uh, that could make a difference if he ramps fast enough. Uh, well, not ramps, if he can find his lands fast enough, if he can find his creatures fast enough. And of course, if he can just remove the threats on Winston's side of the board. But yeah, that was a, that was a pretty fast game. Uh, 15 minutes, less than that actually. 13 minutes. <clears throat> all over and we're moving on to game number two right so here we go Chai Hui uh, has a bobble has at least two lands I think Winston is choosing the Mal so Chai Hui has kept his opening seven Alright, so Winston drawing another, his second hand after the mulligan. Looks like... Looks like it's not an easy decision for him. Can't really tell what's in his hand, but he is considering, I think, what card to drop. And I saw that... I saw him put down a Force of Negation to the bottom of his library. Chai Hui starting off with a Mishra's Bauble into a flooded strand and he's going to crack that straight away so common play pattern here just seeing the top card of his deck and then finding a triome so drawing on Winston's upkeep uh, uh, yeah. ooh and Winston with a turn 1 ether vow very very strong uh, Etherval on 2 is always usually where, where he's going to keep it at allowing him to get in most of his creatures can put it up to 3 as well but we'll see see what he does with it Chai Hui here on his turn uh, looks like he is going to prismatic ending <laughs> the Etherval yep, that, that happens and he's going to traverse so a lot of uh, action happening in the early turns. Yep, finds a basic snow-covered plains. So traverse in the graveyard now means that he has artifact, a land, and two sorceries in his graveyard. So it doesn't matter yet, uh, but Winston, let's see if he can apply some pressure. Etherval being gone really slows down his game plan. Uh, he's going to play a tap land and say go. So not ideal, I don't think. Another bobble for Chai Hui and into Renin 6. 
Ren and Six on an empty board. I mean, this is the kind of things he dreams of, I think. Trying to bait out a counter spell, maybe. Or just hoping that Winston doesn't have one. But he does. Subtlety exiled uh, for Force of Negation. And Winston. Winston going to his turn. Two mana. That's a tight shaper. He's gonna turn the Triumph into an island. So Tide Shaper should have a plus one counter, I think. No, no, it just it just gets plus one. Yep, as long as Shivy has an island. So it looks like Winston is stuck on his two lands right now. Really needed an Etherval to power out his creatures. Oh, but he does, he does, he has a Mutavolt, okay. He's tapping two mana, double blue. And yeah, this makes sense before combat playing the Lord of Atlantis. Uh, Tide Shaper is now 3-3 three, three with Island Walk. Looks like it's on the stack, waiting for Chivy to respond. Yep, so it resolves, and Chivy takes 3, down to 18. So Ice Fang, Coetel, being flashed out, draws a card, he's going to Ephemerate it. Yep, Ephemerate resolves, he's going to draw another card. And... Kind of interesting, I wonder why he didn't... Um, flash it into block before ephemerating it. Could have just been playing around counters maybe. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm sorry, it can't be blocked because of Island Walk, yes. <laughs> so, tapping a green Abundant Growth on the cavern, drawing a card. <clears throat> Everything just draws cards for him right now. And he does have a few options. He can go Risen Reef. He has Orion, of course, in his uh, command zone. Gonna get in with the Coatl. Oh, he can't get in because of Ephemerate, uh, Summoning Sickness. So he's gonna fetch. Hmm, so now he gets a basic island. <laughs> Seems to be sweating a bit. And that's a supreme verdict. Clean, nice clean answer from Chairi. Taking out two fishes for the price of one. Winston gonna get in with the mutable. Chivy down to 12. This is the time where he kind of wants to deploy his engines or start uh, building up his board. Winston has been stuck on three lands for the past two turns. So it looks like Risen Reef is coming down. And ETB trigger, he's gonna look at the top card of his library if it resolves. I think, yep, that's a dispute. And he lets Risen Reef get countered. So he's just gonna pass the turn. Uh, I mean, he could have, he, no, he could have tried for Teferi instead, but I guess he was okay with everything, anything being countered. 
So now Coetel with the three Snowlands and his Death Touch is going to trade with the Mutabolt. And Winston going to deploy uh, Aether Vial. So Chaihui really just depriving Winston of uh, his mana. And going to out-tempo him pretty much. Teferi coming down, drawing a card. Drawing him an Omnath. But it seems like he is also missing his lands. Oh no, nope, he has a land. Just when I said it. So Winston Heath. And Winston, is he just going to play Itaval again? Or does he have anything else to play? Okay, so Itaval, a third Coetel coming down for Chai Hui. And he's gonna. Oh, he just has so much gas in hand right now. Uh, Coetel, he can. He can go Omnath and then uh, he can play Brilliant Six. He can follow that up with maybe a Fury, I think, if he wants to. Doesn't have to. So fetching here, down to 11. And then he's gonna shock. No, just sorry, he's gonna fetch and then get a basic and gain 4 life from Omnath. And yeah, Brennan 6 going up, getting back the Windsor Heath. So he has 4 mana now from the second landfall trigger of Omnath. He's gonna use that to put your Ryan into his hand and say go. So big turn there from Chai Hui, instant board state. And Winston here, stuck on two lands, doesn't seem like he can do much. He is pretty much on turn 3, while Chai Hui is at, on turn 7. And that's it. Power of Omnath, 4C Orion. Just having Orion in hand, um, you know, being able to cast it next turn and get all that value once again from all his permanents very very strong <clears throat> so Chai Hui coming back 1-1 uh, wins in there with a slightly slower hand I think he had a curse catcher he had a force of negation he did go down to 6 um, which probably definitely affected the deck's performance being stuck at 3 mana and then losing the Muta Vault as well. That was that was uh, pretty brutal. Yep. But Chai Hui just showing the power of 4C Orion once again. So many answers, so much of card draw. Always had a full grip. And we are off to game number 3. So... All in all, very, very interesting matchup. Uh, I think Winston, Merfolk really has to go fast enough to get underneath uh, Yorion. While, you know, while he's still playing his Abundant Groves and uh, his Traverse the Open Wells trying to fix his mana, Winston just has to power out his Merfolk. Of course, Chari has a lot of uh, cheap removal as well with the elementals and with uh, things like prismatic ending but that does set him back on cards especially using the evoke ability so Winston here gonna start us off and let's see if they both keep their hands yep island and go no turn one play for Winston <clears throat> And looks like it's just going to be a fetch land here. Try we? Will we see any merfolk? Mutavolt. That's a sealed home merfolk, I guess. Uh, tapping one for Etherval. And another one mana for. Tight Shaper. 
unkicked it's an unkicked tight shaper and I wonder whether I wonder whether he wanted to kick it but then drew the Eater Vowel or he just saw no point in kicking it because Chairi had a fetch land but no difference Chairi still went ahead and got uh, an island which is a hallowed fountain So forest and passes the turn. So just swinging in with the tight shaper. And <laughs> Chai Hui comes out with the coatl. <clears throat> and it ETBs. But it does not block. Makes sense. Tight Shaper is a 2 2 because Chai is an island. And the Coetal does not have Death Touch yet. Okay, and now he's kicked a second Tight Shaper, turning Chai forest into an island. That might be pretty bad for Chai He is now only has green and um, ah, sorry blue and white mana so tapping the white here and prismatic ending targeting the tight shaper looks like he wants his green mana back wow and Winston here exiling last pool mimic Force of Negation, protecting the Tide Shaper, uh, exiling the Prismatic Ending, and Chaiwi, does he have a fetch land? He might have a fetch land. Uh, he does have an island, but he's probably just, he probably just wants his green mana. Yep, so plays a snow-covered island and passes the turn. So Winston with a pretty pretty good board right now. Uh, Etherval on two counters. He has Mutavolt and two tight shapers. Second Mutavolt coming down for Winston. He's gonna tap that immediately. Uh, to <laughs> to get the first Mutavolt up and running, and then he's gonna activate Etherval, and looks like it's gonna be a Lord coming in. Nope, it's going to be the Trickster. Tapping down the Coatl. And yeah, getting in for 6 damage. So Matthew has just said that Kelvin Chu has beaten... Uh, has won his semi-final match, which means he will be in the final. And he is playing your Ryan as well. We will see which of these uh, players will face will face Kelvin Chu and his Yorian deck. But meanwhile, Chai Chai has uh, fetched out a basic plains here instead of a forest with the windswept heat, and he's just gonna go ahead and supreme verdict. So, yep. If Winston gets a land here, he could still swing in with um. Two muter bolts. <clears throat> and he does do that. He has uh, two islands and two muter bolts. Uh, Chai is down to six. So the odds of a Yorian mirror are looking less and less likely. Fury can't come in at uh, instant speed, but he does have a solitude, it looks like. Winston drawing for turn. It's uh, pretty tense right now. Can he get there with the Mutavolts? <laughs> it's a third Mutavolt. So I guess he doesn't care about losing them. He's gonna activate uh, two of them and move to combat, getting in for four damage. But Chai has a response here. He's gonna fetch out 
just a basic forest. Tapping five, he's gonna flash in a solitude, and this is gonna be a nice clean answer to take out uh, both Muta Vaults, I think. He's gonna exile one. He is considering. Right, so Winston activating. Ah, I see. Okay, so Winston activating interval, flashing in the Merfolk trickster to tap down Solitude, uh, which made it unable to block basically. And now Chaiwi is at 2 life. Uh, Winston still has 2 Mutavolts. Oh, okay, so they're calling me over. Uh, yep, so Chaiwi just double checking that the life totals are correct. Uh, I think he missed probably one of the fetch land triggers when he fetched uh, the forest. So, going to, wow, main phase. <laughs> Evoking Fury using Omna, getting rid of the trickster, putting your Ryan into his hand and playing a tap land. So living on the edge right now, uh, Winston does have two mutavolts. He's gonna play a trickster, tapping it down, and looks like that's GG's. Yep. Wow, the top deck, <laughs> top deck Merfolk tricksters, uh, winning the game for Winston. Yes, barely getting there ahead of uh, Solitudes. And looks like we will not have a Yorahan mirror in the finals. Uh, Winston with Merfolk has taken this game 2-1. What an intense game. We're going to see exactly the same matchup in the next game. Um, the Yorahan list will probably look very similar, piloted by Kelvin Shu. So far this tournament, we have already seen uh, three Yorahan decks piloted by three different players. Let's see how our final matchup is going to be like and yeah we will be back soon